All right, so Zuriel, there's probably a lot of salt out there, a lot of people not sure what to do, and a lot of people that don't think the card is worth it. But let's get into it, let's break it down, and let's also talk about some opportunities that are going on right now because of the cost of the things that, you know, are, are, are you know, DEC is down, vouchers are up a bit, but let's get into here. For starters, the big thing, I went over this in the town hall, I said I would do a video on Zerial, so we're kind of recording that now, but I'll also be checking out the chat so you guys can give me some feedback. And crypto gamers, I'll do that next because that's a good question. So we got, we got Zerial here, the first card in the game to belong to two teams. Uh, they kind of tricked us with saying a new mechanic was coming. A lot of us thought that meant we were going to get our full first dual color summoner. I thought that would be really unfair. What teams would get it? Or how would it work? What would be good? And no, instead we got a monster for two colors, Life and Death, which is very interesting. Fallen Angel theme, a very cool art, very cool name. But is it a very cool card? Well, let's go get into the stats. Okay, so if you're just going to pick up one copy, it's going to cost you 80 80,000 DEC. If you have 160 vouchers to throw in there, 40,000 DEC. You get one copy, you get three attack, you get two on the speed, you get no armor, you get four HP, you get weapons training, and life leech. Now, the interesting thing about this card in bronze, the one thing I will say that is interesting for it is if, if you have the cards to play with it, so if we go over here, actually need to log out Gold Steve. I forgot to do that earlier log in my big account because it's the only one that has a good collection of rewards cards and it doesn't even have all of them so we'll go chaos legion rewards and then we'll go soulbound should have done this beforehand and then we'll go death and life and neutral so if you've got yourself some 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 of this card here weapons training with magic and that means that theoretically you can put elven between the two cards it's going to pick up a magic damage it's going to pick up a two archery damage i believe and then it's going to have two attacks per turn you can also you know combine that in with any of the other zero attack monsters within the game though him in between those two cards is kind of weird <coughs> sure he's going to have two attacks but what are you going to do with that you know same thing here when you look at the other weapons training legendary monster on the death team also a magic attacker so they did at least design this so that you can double use these with the new zero attack monsters like the will of the wisp here by comboing it with the new legendary monsters that they released in the soulbound set so these cards are feeding into each other and allowing for some very interesting lineups and combos you could you could definitely see how as you get this zero card up into higher levels levels and now it has that five attack so it's giving three attack to that monster and if you level up that mage so it's getting two you're taking a monster that has no attack like pelagor conjurer or if you go to the death team um let me just quickly add in untamed take away rewards oh take away soul bound just go to playable and we'll just go death for a second um and we'll take away this i want to find this guy right here, a shadowy presence. So I'm gonna throw a shadowy presence on the board for one mana. It's gonna pick up three ranged attack, right? And then it's gonna also pick up two magic attack. And for one, one mana, I'm having a guy doing five damage and he's strengthening and inspiring the other monsters on the team. That is a very interesting play. And on the life side, when you go to the life monsters, the Pelicor Conjurer is probably the best example. Two mana, similar attack, sitting, sitting somewhere, you know doing some very interesting things so overall i would say zuriel's hidden power and, and hidden effect into this game is giving both of these teams two weapons training mass uh, monsters and it does it right away this is why getting one or two copies of the, one or three copies of this card depending on where you play might be worth it for you if you have the discretionary fund right that's the thing that I think a lot of people, including myself, saw my gut reaction, were underestimating in this card. Because I'll tell you right away, when I just look at the card, two speed, five archery damage, five health, that's really annoying. Right here, five and two, five and two. I would have took four and three all day because two speed archers are not good. They miss a lot. It's very, very annoying. Um, 
you don't have you can combine her with kitty currently to protect her a little bit on that and that'll make her much better but this is a card that's brand new it's meant to go into the modern set it's meant to go forward with chaos legion and rebellion kitty will not be there anymore you won't be able to give her true strike so i don't want to count on kitty to make this card good that makes the card seem a little more niche you can only play it in reverse speed um, the death team does have the ability to slow down the other teams, but not as good as the other teams have the ability to speed up. So hitting could be a serious problem with this card when you look at it. Then when you look at the five life and the life leech, that's kind of interesting because you could be gaining quite a lot of HP and you could have a very, very high HP monster on the board. Rust is cool and the divine shield does protect it from dying too early and make sure that in even in a return fire match it's going to have one attack where it just gets to gain life and then if it's gaining life and losing life on their bounce back of equal amounts then it can probably still attack and keep hitting the big question is can the card hit that's the reason why we're not sure this card will be that good right <coughs> i mean if if your two speed monster can't hit it can't gain life it can't do anything right yeah, and, and, and Jabby Saints points out it's kind of meh at, at this level here, but do remember it does three damage. It still do, allows you to do that combo of, of giving two people, uh, two people weapons training, uh, so two attack types to one of those other monsters if you have one of them. So if you can pull off that combo, this card might be more playable than you think. We won't really know until we get it and we try it out because we can't really try out double teaming that weapons training and a lot of us including myself as you could see we don't even have the cards to pull it off my legendaries were only at level two they're not close enough to be able to compete in champion so it's interesting to see though that this is going to be the first card and they pointed this out that has weapon training that people can buy get to max level and start using in the highest level of the game right now or get for gold or silver and really start learn using and not have to wait to get lucky to pull a card so that's something that a lot of people got to, got to understand now let's get into the sale and the cost so we can go over why why this card uh, why most people are a little bit salty where is it is it in here somewhere oh yeah okay so it's 80,000 DEC but you can get 40,000 DEC off with 160 credits because they're being counted at a quarter so we'll get out our trusty calculator <coughs> and We'll look at, you know, the, the 40,000, um, the 160 times 0.25, that's $40. That lowers us down to 80 to 40,000 DEC, 40,000 DEC right now. I think I saw DEC is at um, 0.082 right now, right? Is that right? No, no, not point. No, no. I'm sorry. DEC is... I forgot a couple zeros there. 0. 0.0082. So, no, that's not right either. Right? That's not 40,000. I, I forgot another zero. Sorry, guys. My brain is not working on DEC right now. I should have just went here. <coughs> and went here. And then looked. It's three zeros. Three zeros. Oh, eight, three. Went up a tiny bit. So, go back to the calculator. Try to do this correctly. How much is our opportunity cost? $33 plus 160 vouchers. How much is a voucher worth? Let's go down here. Vouchers are back down to 11 cents. They had reached 12. So 160 times 0.11. $17 plus $33. So it's about a $50 card right now, right? Yeah, thanks guys in the chat. I should have just looked over there. So, you know, $50 to get one copy of the card. Pretty expensive. There's definitely some cards out there in the marketplace that if you don't already have, you could you should go buy first. Uh, I heard uh, uh, Tails just the, a few minutes ago. I was watching a little bit of another stream. He said, go buy a Dr. Blight. They're cheaper than $50. And when I go look at the market, and we go look at Legendary, we go look at Neutral, we go look at Dr. Blight, he is cheaper. He's $43. But that's only if you want to buy a level two one. Eh, he's still, you know... 43 43 but the difference here is you know jabby could do that crypto gamers could do that and the 43 uh jewel could do it um and then we're in the 40 then we're in the 44s for the next few people and then we're in oh 
you know, well, now we're up at $69 because a couple of people listened to Tales and they decided to buy those $44 and $43 Dr. Blights. That, that's the thing that I think he's not seeing when he says a comment like that because this is your chance to buy a card where you can get all the copies where, like, if I wanted 11 Dr. Blights, let's just look at what that would end up costing me. <laughs> well, if I took these ones, right, that's got three. Well, okay, 400... 11 of them would be $472 for one person who bought this one, which is cheaper than $500, $500 right? $550 for, for a max level of the new card. Um, but after that, so after that one's off the market, we can go here. And this one is $473. And then that, those are off the market. And then none, nonetheless, you can't get, not that many people can buy their max level Dr. Byte instead of this card before Dr. Byte's going to go up in price. And that's going to be something that you can say for a lot of these legendaries that you look at that only have around 40 copies available. A few people are going to push them up very quick if we were to get a big sale. So this is the opportunity for a lot of whales to come in and pick up a, a card that could be very valuable in the future for a good price that has a lot of utility from what I can see. Then I'm going to do one more little little calculator trick with you to show you a play that you can do so if you're somebody who's had a large stake of sps like myself i have around three thousand vouchers so i can get up to four thousand vouchers because if i want to buy 25 of them to guarantee myself a gold foil that's four thousand vouchers and if i could do the forty thousand dec times 25 that is a million so i can turn <clears throat> a million DEC plus 4,000 vouchers and 4,000 vouchers are currently worth about 300,000 DEC into 24 copies and a gold foil, but I might get one more gold foil. Then now we've already said it's about a $50 card with the current price of vouchers and DEC. So uh, you can try to sell them at, I don't know, the extras at about you're gonna have 13 extra cards <coughs> right and so you can sell those let's say at $45 so you're gonna sell those for $45 you're gonna forget $585 back but you're gonna get it in DEC since DEC is at point at uh you you're, we're gonna divide that by point oh oh eight three and I'm gonna get back uh 70 no wait that's not right Um, it should be 700,000, I think. Or am I wrong? If I sold a card for a dollar, it's not... How do you do the math, guys? I think I'm doing it wrong. I think I was supposed to do um, 13 times $45 and $585 into DEC would be... You have to multiply by 1.2, roughly, right? Well, no, wait, it shouldn't be 1.2. It should be 1.17. That's, that's if it was at, if you were get, cause you get back more. I'm so bad at this right now. I, I don't know why I can't figure this out properly. So if I sold a card for $50, how much DEC would I get? You would get 50,000 DEC if it was at peg. So I would, I should be getting 45,000 DEC per card plus the extra 1.18 I think that's how you do it okay so you get about 53,000 DEC per card you times that by the 13 you get back about 690,000 if you can sell them for about $45 if you could sell those 13 cards for a little bit more you get back a little bit more so now you're at a net loss of about ha like half the DEC you spent a little bit less than half and then the gold foil if you could sell that card Let's go look like what is a gold foil Dr. Blight since we're comparing it. $349, maybe that's a little bit more rare. So maybe we go more somewhere in between there. Let's say $200. So, oops, I wasn't supposed to click that. Um, we're supposed to bring the calculator back up. So we had about, oh, we'll just round say 690,000. And then if we could sell it for 200 bucks, 
that would normally get you 200,000 DEC. You multiply that by the 1.18 if DEC hasn't gone up and you get 236,000 plus 690,000. Oops, we're supposed to put a dot that you got before. And now I've almost got back, you know, the 1 million DEC I got in there. And I basically only lost my voucher cost and about 70,000 DEC to get a max legendary copy of this card. <coughs> the math gets a little bit crazier if the card isn't selling for $45 because when this card goes into print and a lot of people start spending DEC, and spending lots of vouchers to, to mint 25 of these or to mint a couple of these, we could see DEC move up in price, which means I would get back a little bit less, but we could also see vouchers move up in price. But if DEC and vouchers move up in price, then I don't have to sell the card for $45. Then I can sell it for $50 or $55 possibly. If let's say vouchers get up to like 20 cents as the sale is going on, then you have an opportunity to, to possibly get back more DEC. And basically all I did was cash all of my vouchers in at a 25% value and turn them into a max level copy of the card. So I wonder if you guys think that would be a pretty good play.